Hey guys, what is up? Zkilla from Zkilla Lives Life, and today we're gonna look at some of my amphibians that I have. Well, all of them. <laughs> so, here's all the amphibians' cages. There's that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. But I think we'll start off with this one. All right, this is in his uh, permanent cage. He has a bigger one. It's a ten gal. It's a ten gallon, but it had like some sort of worms in the substrate, so it was getting kind of nasty. So I moved him in here temporarily while I wash that out. Anyways. This is my fantasy Pac-Man frog burger. She is adorable. See, not very big yet, but I mean, she'll get about that big. And she's a fantasy Pac-Man frog, and what a fantasy Pac-Man frog is, is a crossbreed between a Pac-Man frog and a <laughs> Suriname horned frog. Now actually, uh, they don't need that much space because uh, they don't move around a lot, actually. As you can see, they're pretty much just a blob, and they just wait for food. And so actually a container this big for this size of a frog would be just fine, but I do have a much larger cage for her. Uh, but yeah, so just some moist moist uh, substrate. Uh, I use sphagnum moss here, and uh, a water dish. I don't have a water dish in this one because, well, they absorb most of their water through their skin, so, yeah. Uh, really easy uh, animal to take care of. I know that some people that have had baby ones and they pass away really quick. Uh, I don't know what that's about. I mean, I've never had problems with her. They're great eaters, uh, eat anything. I feed her earthworms, millworms, crickets, and cockroaches, and the occasional mouse. Uh, not live, frozen thought, of course. Uh, <laughs> she's being a little... Oh, sorry. She's being a little squirmy today. Usually not this squirmy. So really easy to handle. Never really bite unless you're acting like food. Uh, but, yeah, really easy to care for. And so... And it's a part, and you can see why the Suriname horned frog in them because Suriname horned frogs have the line through the eye pupil there, and they have these horns, which are very pronounced in the fantasy Pac-Man frog. And plus, with the fantasy, you get these nice colors. And actually, she's usually a darker color of red, but she's got some. She's a little white right now, with some green. <laughs> Jumping. All right, I'm gonna put her away before she escapes. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Not very stable frogs. Alright. Alright. Next up, I'm going to show you my Asian spiny toad. Bufo something. <laughs> Can't remember the species. Alright, let's see. Where is he? You can see water dish, foliage, and cocoa fiber sphagnum moss mix. There she is. Or he, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not that good. So, here he is. My Asian uh, spiny toad. This is a very simple species to care for. Pretty much any toad in the species in the genus Bufo is really simple to care for. And they have really leathery, dry skin, which is, you know, not very common in amphibians. But this guy, uh, this guy eats really good. Uh, let's see, what's his name? I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Should be better, but you can see it's a toad because toads have these poison sacs behind their head. And, of course, the dry, warty skin. There he is. He really likes to climb. I don't know what his deal is, but he climbs a lot. Oops, sorry. And the reason this is called an Asian spiny toad, because if you look right there, right above the eyes are two little sort of crests <laughs> and yeah that's why they're called spiny toads now these are found all over Asia uh, really common down there so yeah and they have kind of a reddish hue it's kind, he's kind of dark because he's covered in substrate and I think he's gonna shed his skin where and he'll eat his uh, full body booger <laughs> which is what they do oh, turn it. Yeah. <laughs> so Really cool, easy species to keep. Uh, pretty calm too. Um, it they eat. Pr they're pretty good eaters. Uh, they'll eat worm, earthworms, millworms, cockroaches, and crickets, insectivores as usual. So I'm just gonna let her go back into her little 
hide or he or whatever he is. I'm gonna wait for those guys because they're poisonous and I don't want to handle the other frogs after handling them. I'm just gonna put these off to the side. Oh, that's a little heavier than I thought. <laughs> Next up is my Cuban tree frog. I'm sorry if the picture's blurry. I don't have the best camera. Kind of has to let it focus, but no. so yeah. Ah, where did he go? Oh, there he is. So as you can see, pretty easy setup. Hide, cocoa fiber, and sphagnum moss mix again. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> ah! <laughs> no, no, don't go over there. No. Oh, don't want to go in there. Beardy will eat you. As you can see, it's trying to do through the glass. <laughs> Alright, got him. <laughs> so this is my Cuban tree frog, Spaz. Yeah, no. yeah this is going to be a very blurry video. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, as you can see, very good jumpers. So there he is. Glory. So this is a Cuban tree frog, which is native to Cuba. It is also an invasive species in the U.S. in Florida. Uh, they're really easy to care for, but they tend to be runners and pretty fragile, so not for small kids. Jeez. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, you're beta turd. Okay, just sit there, please. <laughs> okay, you can see why it's called spaz. Um, Cuban tree frogs, uh, they are very voracious eaters and will eat pretty much anything they can fit in their mouth and which is why they're a serious problem in Florida because they're eating the native frogs. So, but they're not invasive here in Utah and they're really nifty little frogs. <laughs> I like them. Uh, not really hard to take care of, just keep the humidity up and give them some climbing space and they're pretty happy. He usually uh, sits in this log made out of clay and what I do is I just put it up like that and he'll just climb in there and stay in there almost all day and a water dish of course so he can swim if he wants so yeah Cuban tree frog and here second to last is my it's not a rose hair that is a <laughs> this is a my Australian yeah, I'll just get that later. <laughs> my Australian white tree frog named Bubbles She's brown, but yeah. <laughs> uh, this is probably one of my favorite frogs. That I Sorry about that, the video got cut off, but <laughs> here she is. It's a very pretty frog, even though she's just the regular brown. Uh, you also get the blue ones and the green ones. Uh, I've even seen purple ones for sale. She's got those cool white spots, she's very chubby. And the cool thing about the white tree frog is that they don't really jump that much for a uh, arboreal species. They're pretty chill and will just kind of sit on your arm, which is really awesome. And I mean, she'll get about that big. I mean, they get pretty big. I've seen <laughs> videos of them when they're full grown and they're just massive, like big as a Pac-Man. I mean, they're pretty dang big. <laughs> they're really cool frogs. They're also called the... Um, dumpy frog because as they get older they get rolls of fat over their eyes and in their throat. You can see she kind of already has a big chin going on there. But very cool frog. Great starter species for our boil, bar, our boreal frogs. Uh, good eaters too. Uh, she doesn't really eat from tongs though. She kind of only eats if it's in her run around in her cage. So she'll eat cockroaches and millworms and of course crickets but super easy to care for this is probably the most advanced setup I have and if you look down there this is down there is a hide and she's got this these climbing sticks and then a water dish and then filled with sphagnum and cocoa fiber so yeah I'm gonna put her back oh, apparently she's decided that she wanted to go put herself back there now she hates me closing the lid on her I don't know what her deal is with that, but... And yeah, this one needs a little bit higher humidity. No. See? Told you. 
and so they need to be sprayed every day. Dude, chill. That's my psycho bear to dragon Len, if you don't know him. He's kind of evil, <laughs> but I love him still. But yeah, she likes it in there. And then last but not least are my fire belly toads. Ooh, I... Hold on, one second. Uh... <laughs> It's impossible to open sometimes. Ah. Okay, here they are. So, these are my two fire belly toads. And they're, these are Asian species. And the reason they're called fire belly toads, if I can grab one, I'm trying to get a little more jumpy. <laughs> Sounds a little fast. The reason they're called fire belly toads is because of that bright. I don't know if you saw it, but they have a bright red belly with mo black modeling. Dude, chill. So yeah, <laughs> if you could see it. And so they have a simple cage, a little hide here, and uh, moss, and a water dish with some rocks in it. So really easy to care for. And actually, funny story, both of these guys were actually uh, give, given to me from friends. So what happened is this one here was a prom gift, okay? And the girl didn't want it anymore, and so she knew about me, and she asked me to take it. Ow! Don't bite me. <laughs> They're hungry, little buggers. <laughs> but, so, yeah. And then this one was a birthday present. Right there. Ow, it's biting me. Ow! <laughs> They're hungry. <laughs> and uh, it was a birthday present to a kid, and he didn't want any more, and my brother found out, and he gave it to my brother, which he gave to me. But, yeah. Super easy to care for frogs, but, listen, guys, uh, you don't want to give these as gifts, because most of the time, people don't want them. If you want to get an, a reptile or any kind of amphibian as a gift, really, really go talk, oh my gosh, you guys are so close. Really, really talk it out with the person you're giving it to. Make sure they know what they're getting. You can't just really surprise gift these. It's, it's a live animal. It's a little more difficult than just any regular toy present. Settle down. What is wrong with you? Yeah, you're crazy. Yeah, they're trying to bite my fingers. <laughs> I, I hand feed them, so the, this is why they're trying to bite my fingers. Um, but yeah, really cool pets, uh, super easy to care for. I mean, I've seen on Instagram where people have huge, uh, illustrious cages and stuff, so, yeah. Also, uh, check out my Instagram at zombiekill5.com, not dot com, <laughs> at zombiekill5. Uh, I post pictures and videos about my animals every day or so. So, yeah, uh, that's my amphibian collection, and all I have to say is... Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.